about uh, Dr. Terry Tafoya. Terry Tafoya's mother sits on the tribal council of Warm Springs, or Warm Springs, Oregon tribe. And Terry's father was a shepherd. And when his father died, he had over 2,000 sheep. Dr. Tafoya. Nick Pachwai. Ini wa nisha khaya mai aswan kuchi u kuchad. Nishna ma. I'm very honored to be here today. This is an important time for us in 1992 as Native American people, for this is the 500th anniversary of Native American people's discovery of Columbus. The four candles that you see in front of me are chosen not for decorative purposes, but because they represent the four colors, the four different directions for my community. And they represent the colors of the sky, the white for the dawn, the blue for the sky at noon, the red for the setting sun, and black for the night. And I light my candle for those of us who love someone with AIDS. And may our sorrow and our grief be far in the future. What I would like to do too is propose just as in our traditional teaching there's a cycle of things, just as these four colors are a cycle that come each day. That for Native American people, our loss is also in a cycle. That when the European people came, they brought diseases for which we had no immunity. And so it was very common within our communities for people to die, not from HIV, but from mumps and measles and influenza and smallpox. It's estimated, for example, for my mom's people up in the Pacific Northwest that over 80% of our native population died within two generations of white contact because of these diseases. For that reason, we have experience in terms of what it means to have multiple loss. In Lewis and Clark's journal, in writing of going to the Pacific Ocean, they talk about going through villages of my ancestors where there were 3,000 people in the villages. On their return voyage a few years later, there'd be less than 300 people surviving in those villages because of the diseases that were brought. For that reason, we have worked for a long time, literally centuries, in terms of learning to deal with multiple loss. We do it through stories. We do it through different kinds of teaching. And I ask, just as we have been able to share four of our stories with you, that four of you listening to us share your stories with us. And as Leon said, he will pick up the names from you. And at random, although in our traditional teachings there's really no such thing as randomness, four of you will be chosen to share your stories with all of us. And I'd like to start by telling you a traditional story. And a kushawasha is how we traditionally begin stories. It means this is the way it was. It's how we begin traditional stories. And a kushawasha. A long time ago, there was a caterpillar man and a caterpillar woman. They loved each other very much. Until finally one day, the caterpillar man died. And his wife mourned him didn't want to see anybody, didn't want to be around anybody. She wrapped her sorrow as though it was a shawl around her, and she started walking. And all the time she was walking, she was crying, mourning low. She walked in a straight line. And because the world is a circle, at the end of 12 moons, she returned to where she had started. And the Creator looked down and took pity on her. The Creator said, you've suffered too long. Now's the time to step into a new world of color, a new world of beauty. And as the Creator spoke, there was a clapping of hands. And at those two claps, she burst forth as a butterfly. And that's why for us, the butterfly is the symbol for being reborn of everlasting life. 
And so it is that when we have a loss, that in our tradition our hair is cut, the clothing that we normally wear is taken off and new clothes are given to us in blacks and browns and grays because it represents the cocoon stage. And during that time, you're not allowed to work. You don't even wash your own hair. That's all done for you by your extended family because your only job is to grieve like the caterpillar woman. And there's a dance that's done on the reservation at Warm Springs. Willilikwashashat, the butterfly dance. And young women come in with their shawls and pull them over their head and come in a straight line. And the singers sing a very sad song. So finally the dancers complete a circle, and when they do that, the drummers beat twice to represent the hand claps of the creator. Then the young women pull their shawls apart, spread them as though they were wings, and they start a skipping form of a dance. And the rhythm of the dance changes to something much lighter. forms the symbol for us that as I told you they'll put the dark clothes on the people but at the end of the time of mourning there'll be another celebration what we call a paloxysis ceremony the people will come again and strip off the dark clothes of the person and put on clothes similar to what I'm wearing now the colors of the butterfly the bright colors to remind us of how precious life is and how we continue on but there's also something that's important for me to try to say to you, too. In our experience with multiple loss as Native American people, perhaps it's a cultural thing, but we really don't do moments of silence. And perhaps we've had too many moments of silence, and it's time to speak instead. There's also within this experience a tremendous amount of anger, and some people who fall into warrior categories, express that anger for the rest of us. This is something that I brought from a village a little south of my father's village at Taos Pueblo, from the Acoma people. This is what we call a seed pot. It's made round and there's only one small opening. And it's the idea that if you're coming from a farming community, you never eat everything you always retain the seed corn that will be able to generate the new food for the next generation. And this is what this is for. It's what the seed is put into, it's seed pot. You put the corn or the other things that you're growing inside, and then on top of it, you'll put a little flat stone to protect any kind of mouse from getting into it. Now, this is a very elaborate design. It's all done by hand. A tremendous amount of effort went into this. Now, it's very interesting in terms of making pottery. I don't know if any of you make pottery or not. But in our tradition, there's the idea of virgin pottery. And if you take clay that has never been fired, it makes a very, very weak kind of pot. And so what the people will do is go out and gather shards of old pottery. Now, the archaeologists hate us for this, but they don't understand these things the way that we do. And they'll take the broken shards of the old pottery because a chemical and physiological transformation takes place when the clay has been heated. And the old clay that has been fired, become very hot and very strong, forms a seed, if you will, for the crystalline structure of the new pot. And so if you take the shards of the old pottery and grind them into powder and you mix them into the wet clay of the new pot, it creates tremendous strength when that pot is fired. And this is the issue in terms of all of us who have lost someone. That all those memories are seeds for us. All those memories of seeds for our heart in terms of the blossoming of memory. Those things which are the best part of those people that we lost. 
which grow within our hearts to blossom and allow us to be an expression of them. But to do so, sometimes you have to break things. To remember to take those seats with you. One of the things we've learned in the work that we've done is the importance of witnesses. A lot of us who have had to watch people pass over, the part of our role is that of witnesses. For those of you who are surviving with HIV, some of you are in the process of becoming elder statespersons, to be guides, to be counselors, for those of you who are experiencing this now. And for those of us of every community, when people tell us that this is not really our concern because it's not our disease, our answer as Native American people is, it's a problem for all of us. Our planet has an immune deficiency syndrome, and people are merely symptoms of the planet's sickness. There's much that we need to do. Unfortunately, our time is drawing to a close. There are many other rituals that we would share with you or ceremonies if there were only more time. But let me leave you with the idea, for those of you who come from societies, no matter where they are, with the idea that perhaps you don't have rituals and you don't have ceremonies. Rituals are a way of containing certain powerful emotions, to let them out, to experience them, and then close the ceremony so that you can go back into the world. For those of you who feel as though you don't have ceremonies or traditions or rituals, the oldest song was once sung for the first time. The oldest of rituals was once done for the first time. If you create those things that are meaningful to you and they have power, then they will continue to be passed on. You can create your own rituals, your own traditions, and those will become the legacy, the seeds that you give unto others. What we would like to do, because it's so close to the time, is close now. But the nice thing about healing circles is that they don't break up as our last speaker said, they just get larger to carry a sense of healing. And in the old English, the word healing is actually related to the word whole, W-H-O-L-E, which is related to the word holy, to access those parts that we may have forgotten, to put aside because of the pain. And as you leave, I want you to remember the names of those that you've lost. And one of the interesting things is that as you try to remember those people you've lost, not all of their names will come to you. In our tradition, that means that your grieving for them is done. And other people's names will flash through your minds. And throughout today, in the few days to come, there'll be other names that you remember to say hello. There may be some who walk through your dreams to remind you that that bond is still there. And when that happens, it's a blessing for you. Anakushnai. Anakushnai means the story is over, but only the telling of it for today. <laughs>